Hi, this is Soft Cell Video Productions and I'm your host, The Answer Man. This video will show you how to construct a large scale diffuser with a minimum amount of time and effort. As you know, the standard diffusion board is constructed with a gazillion precision cut blocks that are arranged in a specific pattern in 2x2 two two or 4x4 four four foot units. If you use that method, you're wasting a huge amount of time and labor. I thought of a way to build a very effective diffusion wall last year when I was working on my fifth recording studio. The sound engineer was into his second day on a 4x4 four four diffuser and he wasn't even a third of the way done. That's when I had that eureka moment. Just for the record, this is my idea, my invention, and not borrowed from any other YouTube video or acoustical book. So don't try to use my formula in a video. Here it is. You still use wood as a diffusing agent, but you don't get hung up on the mathematics of exact block size or location. You start with 6 each, 4 inch by 4 inch by 8 foot beams, and you lay the beams out in an area so they can be clamped together and cut. Arrange the beams so that they are offset by 3 and 3 quarter inches. That's how wide a 4 by 4 really is. Using two or three carpenters large wood clamps, clamp the beams tightly together. Starting at the bottom, label your beams 1 through 6. Next, using an L square, mark lines every 3 and 3 quarter inches over the entire surface of the clamped 4x4 four four area. Now comes the tricky part. Set your saw to a depth of 3 quarters of an inch and cut your first two lines. Following the pattern of the diagram, skip a cut. The S stands for surface since that will be the high part of the end product. Your next cut will be to a depth of 1.5 inches and again skip the next row. Your final saw depth will be set at 2.5 inches. Skip a row and start over at zero. Once all the cuts are made, turn each 4x4 four four on its side. Use an extremely wide wood chisel and rubber mallet to knock out the notches. When all the notches have been knocked out, Arrange the beams in this pattern starting from the bottom. Beam number 2, 1, 4, 3, 6, 5. One half of the diffuser looks like this. My computer wouldn't let me fit the whole thing on there, so I improvised. To give you a better idea of the overall pattern, I cut it in half and stacked one half on the other. You can clearly see the pattern. The darker the color, the deeper the knockout. Don't worry about a smooth knockout. And this is why. The block pattern that I am using is the primary diffuser, but the roughness of the knockout actually acts as a secondary diffuser, which gives you superior diffusion characteristics. Using this technique, you can go 8 feet wide and as tall as you like, or 8 feet tall and as wide as you like. Chances are you're going to have corner absorbers surrounding this diffuser, so it really doesn't matter. One last thing. The type of wood you use is very important to the sound. If you use standard pine, you will get fairly good sound reflection. Adding a coat of urethane will increase the reflectivity, and if you use a softer wood like redwood or cedar, there will be a small amount of high range sound absorbed, which could be a really good thing especially if you're working in a smaller studio. As for mounting, if you're smart enough to clamp and cut this diffuser properly, then you probably know the basics of glue and screw. That wraps up how to make a very large and effective diffuser in a short period of time. As always, your comments are welcome, and I thank you for watching this. Have a great day.